morning happy Monday uh, it's kind of a weird morning because I'm and I'm getting ready I'm making coffee and I was gonna tell you a little bit about my coffee <laughs> they scheduled my appointment for this pickup at 8 30 which is really late because I'm like less than an hour well with traffic I'm about an hour away I'm about to make a pour over so I'm measuring out some water that I'm gonna nuke for seven minutes, that's how I do it. And it always gets it to the right temperature. I'm really precise about the way I make my coffee. Uh, I haven't measured what that temperature is. I probably should, but it's like a little under boiling, you know? Um, the right temperature is key. And then this coffee I have is Espiritu, which is from Dark Matter Coffee in Chicago. And I probably will show, will have shown right before this a clip from when I went there recently. Uh, I really love that place and it sounds silly, but I really like good packaging in general in life. Like I like creative, beautiful, artistic packaging and this package is so gorgeous. It sounds silly, but this is one of their barrel aged coffees uh, from San, San Petrona, El Salvador. El Salvador is where the beans are from. And then the cultivar is bourbon honey. I don't know what that means exactly. And then barrel copper and Kings brandy barrel. So I guess this is aged in brandy barrels because I was under the impression that this was one of the barrel aged coffees that was uh, aged in, um, so they have a few different ones. Let's see, I, I emptied these, but I kept them so I could show you. Yeah, this is the same one and I thought it was. No, it's not. Let's see here, what is this one called? The package is the same, but this one was a special holiday edition and it was, uh, cask conditioned and Jägermeister cold brew barrels, I guess, or it's, I don't know. I'm not sure how to explain that very well. And this one is from a different origin. That's interesting. It's called Espiritu also, but it has a different, um, all, all of the, uh, the origin, the cultivar and cask condition are different. Anyway, this, so one thing I really like as a person who I don't drink alcohol at all anymore, but I, I was, when I was drinking, a big part of what I loved about alcoholic beverages was the taste. Like, I'm not just one of those people that drinks for the buzz, although I like that too, but it was uh, the, the taste of things. I was really into like wine tastings and different types of tastings actually. Uh, lots of fun memories from those. <laughs> Um, day drinking people, but these, these beans are aged in, in Jaeger barrels or it's, I don't know what that means. Jaeger cold brew, but it's, it has some of the flavor notes of Jaegermeister and I was never a big Jaeger person, but I really like certain intense flavors. And so like, it's really interesting. Like when you smell it, when you brew it, you can smell some of the faint notes that you would get in Jaeger, which I'm not going to be very good at explaining, but I think there's like a little bit of a licorice note. When I think of the smell or taste of Jaeger, I think dark green. And I know that sounds weird. I think dark viscous green, cause that's what it tastes like. That's what it smells like to me. There's maybe like some pininess to it. Um, and I like that, you know, it's one of those things that I couldn't imagine drinking like more than one shot of it or something. But if you have one, there's something kind of satisfying about it. And one of the other roasts that I had recently, which I saved the package from, this is one of their fun holiday roasts. So one of the things I love about uh, Dark Matter Coffee is they're very like stoner centric and their aesthetic reflects that. So this is the uh, Chronica, <laughs> which you can see those are not candles, they're little joints. Uh, it has a fun little poem on it. The Festival of Lighting Up is what it says. And um, I won't read you the whole poem, but it's it's a poem about smoking weed for Hanukkah. And they have the, uh, for the the Christmas 
celebrants, they have um, Old Dank Nick, which is a classic, and it's got like a stone Santa on the <laughs> on the package. I used to get that one always, and then this year I'm like, oh, let me get Chronica. Let me try that out. It's so good, and it's aged in um, Malort barrels or like with Malort or so, like the beans are soaked in Malort or something like that. For the uninitiated, Malort is like a Chicago classic, and it's it's much maligned. Many people hate Malort. Um, <laughs> as a bartender, a longtime bartender in a Chicago, various Chicago bars, but like a couple dive bars, Malort has this sort of like romanticism around it, and it's um, it's like a bitter punch in the mouth, and I love that. I love an intensely bitter flavor. And to me, it's like, I can't, Im again, can't imagine having more than one shot, but sometimes one just, ugh, one gnarly Malort shot just hits the spot for some reason. I say this present tense, but I don't drink any of these things anymore, but I can appreciate them. You know, to me, it's like, I love flavors. I love flavor experiences. Um, and some people, I think, drink Malort because it's like the shock value thing. It's one of those things like the, first time someone has one you got to get a picture because it's like the Malort face and then I think if I'm remembering correctly there's a combo that's very Chicago called the I think it's called the Chicago kiss and it's like a an old style and a shot of Malort or something like that I've had many old styles in my life as well <laughs> it used to be my mom's beer of choice which then became my beer of choice college anyway I really like these coffees so I'm gonna brew some up here and stop yammering but yeah so this place I'm going to is um, a a bottler and uh, so I'll be moving some kind of like some kind of non-alcoholic beverages actually and um, it says in the driver notes not to be early but they scheduled it for 8 30 and I'm about to start my clock it's only six and so I would be there like probably I'm gonna try to get there at 7 30 but it might be earlier than that and I hope that they don't turn me away but I I'm not going to start my clock too late because it's late as it is. Like I'm trying to start getting on the road by 5 a.m. every day because I want to shut down earlier so that I can find parking more easily. And I just, it's way less stressful. So even if this means more sitting, cause I'm doing a live load and live unload today, which I'm probably going to spend a lot of time on my butt today. Well, either way I would be right. I'm driving, but, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to just, um, I'm going to go there early and if they turn me away, I'm just going to have to let my clock get eaten up a little bit today, which is not great, but I'm doing it because I would rather lose some money. I know it sounds crazy to some people because a lot of people are smarter with money and stuff than I am by far, but I would rather lose some money than deal with that stress at the end of my shift. The anxiety while I'm driving is not worth it. So anyway, hope you're having a good day wherever you are. All right, we're about to head out on this rainy morning. And let me try this uh, coffee for sip of the day. Always the best one. Mm. Oh yeah, that's really good. Mm. It has a different depth of flavor. And I, I make my coffee pretty strong, but not so strong that it's, um, I never want my coffee to be like muddy the temperature thing and the precision, like I saw someone commented in my comments, they make, they make an AeroPress. Um, AeroPress I think is one of the best ways to make coffee that I've seen. It's kind of similar to a French press, I think if I'm getting that right, or maybe the AeroPress is the one where it sort of suctions the water through the coffee, but it's all about extracting. The, it's like the right concentration of coffee to water and that's where the temperature is so important to get it exactly right. Uh, this is going back to like my culinary school experiences and understanding how temperature interacts with things. Also, I spent a lot of time over the years watching shows by Alton Brown and I, anyone who wants to learn any basics about cooking, like if you want to get a recipe right that you feel is tricky, look up the Alton Brown version because it's awesome. It's always like including the science in it. He's probably done some great stuff about coffee, but a good coffee, the right temperature, the right amount of grounds, the right grind. Um, I always ask them, ask them to grind it for pour over. And this is not a true pour over. I don't have like a pour over pot. You know, I'm not measuring the water temperature. I'm not doing it in a super precise way, but I can really tell the difference when like the water temperature isn't high enough when I make it or when I have uh, poured it through too fast, it doesn't extract it the same way. So it's not as concentrated. The flavor isn't as good. This coffee is 
outstanding, <laughs> I must say. And then the other thing I do, which I sort of evolve in this, but lately for a while now, I've been doing um, heavy cream in my coffee, which is, it's a lot, you know, it's like fatty and rich. But the reason I do that is um, when you add fat to coffee, whether it's half and half, oat milk, heavy cream, whatever you add to it, uh, it actually slows the absorption of caffeine in your body. The fat helps to like slow the metabolism of caffeine and that's intentional on my part because I'm not trying to get like a jolt of caffeine. I think it's also easier on my body to just not, <laughs> to have that in there to sort of moderate how my body is like receiving the caffeine. I think too much maybe, but I don't know. I'm interested in these kinds of sciencey food things. So this coffee tastes amazing. If you were to step into my cab right now, you would be surrounded by the most awesome coffee aroma. I love that. <laughs> it's the little things. I'm a big believer in like enjoying the simple things in life. I need to leave and I'm kind of stalling because I'm running too early and I know it, um, which is a good thing. I guess it's better than running late. I did just double check the notes and it says um, it can arrive as early as 8 a.m. for an 8.30 appointment. I'm going to get there at like 7.45. I'm going to try to push it a little bit, so it should be okay.